The long-awaited return to the Shanghai International Circuit this weekend is not as exciting for the driver as it is for the fans, seeing how Red Bull and Verstappen feel, especially because there is also a sprint event on Saturday. Both Max and Checo feel pessimistic, and this could only mean that if the Red Bulls drive precariously on Saturday and Sunday, Ferrari might get another chance in beating them, thus making this, at least for now, a very interesting season. But why is Red Bull so concerned, and could it just be mind games and nothing more? Red Bull had a great start to the 2024 season with a 1-2 victory in every race except the Australian Grand Prix where Max Verstappen had a braking issue so he had to retire the car and Perez couldn't do much about the amazing Ferraris in front with Carlos Sainz taking the victory in front of Charles Leclerc. It is a scenario that we expected but there is still hope for an interesting season ahead with the upcoming Chinese Grand Prix this weekend where it will feature a sprint event as well. This is the first race in China since 2019 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the situation around the grid is now completely different. With Lewis Hamilton being the last winner here and a Mercedes 1-2, we will now see Red Bull as the main favourite. But could they win is a completely different story because the team, as we will see later on, is worried and with a good reason. Red Bull unveiled its initial major upgrade package for 2024 during the Japanese Grand Prix, marking a significant shift in the car's design direction since the previous season. And despite this overhaul, the developmental trajectory mirrors that of 2023 very closely. Last year's focus was on mitigating performance setbacks coming from the car's cooling demands, and this led to substantial advancements in refining the side pod packaging, notably in in Baku in April and subsequently in Budapest in July. But now Red Bull remains concentrated on similar focal points. Maximizing downforce generation requires careful management of airflow utilized for cooling purposes. However, achieving this goal extends beyond mere adjustment of inlet and exit apertures on the bodywork. Optimizing inlet positioning necessitates identifying areas of positive pressure on the car that minimally disrupt the primary airflow structure crucial for downforce generation. Conversely, optimizing exit positioning entails locating low pressure zones that can either be left unused or harnessed to enhance overall airflow dynamics intermittently. This strategy reminds us of past innovations such as the S-duct, which redirected airflow from the lower to the upper surface of the nose, and the F-duct, which manipulated airflow to affect the rear wing's performance. However, both of these techniques have since been banned. As F1 returns to China, Red Bull will be cautiously optimistic regarding its performance prospects and despite its dominant streak in the 2024 season, setbacks such as Max Verstappen's DNF due to reliability issues in Melbourne, coupled with Ferrari's escalating competitiveness, have kept the World Championship race tightly contested. During the Melbourne race, the team encountered unforeseen hurdles in vehicle setup and speed maintenance. Dr. Helmut Marco expressed his apprehension to Sky Deutschland, stating his desire for fewer unexpected events compared to those experienced in Australia. He highlighted the demanding characteristics of the Melbourne circuit, noting the particularly abrasive nature of the asphalt. Additionally, he admitted to a significant oversight regarding tyre longevity, an aspect typically considered a strength for Red Bull. He acknowledged the misjudgment in estimating tyre wear, an area where the team typically performs well, and pointed out Sergio Perez's significant tyre degradation as an additional challenge. Verstappen has been very outspoken about his disapproval of the sprint format since its introduction, and heading straight into the sprint shootout after just an hour of practice adds another layer of uncertainty to the weekend, and this is especially true on a circuit where the new ground effect cars have yet to race, presenting further unknowns for drivers and teams with only 60 minutes of on-track running before sprint qualifying. 
In response, adjustments have been made to the weekend format, allowing teams to tweak their cars after the sprint. Qualifying for Sunday's Grand Prix has been returned to its traditional Saturday afternoon slot to prevent Park Ferme conditions from affecting setup options too early. Nevertheless, there remains limited time for drivers and teams to get up to speed before the action heats up at the Chinese Grand Prix. While many drivers are familiar with the Shanghai International Circuit, the lengthy gap since the last race there leads the reigning world champion to question the decision to hold a sprint event at this venue. Yeah, it's very smart to do that, Verstappen said with a chuckle after it was pointed out to him the teams will have one practice session before heading into the sprint shootout in China. I think it's not great, let's say like that, to do that. Because when you have been away from a track for quite a while, I think you never know what you're going to experience, right? So it would have been better to have a normal race weekend there. But on the other hand, it probably spices things up a bit more and that's maybe what they would like to see. But yeah, purely from a driving perspective, performance perspective of the sport, I think it's not the smartest thing to do. We'll see what we get there. I mean, I always love driving there. So yeah, hopefully we can hit the ground running as well as we can. And hopefully we don't need to fine tune too many things on the car. Additionally, the Shanghai circuit itself has undergone significant changes, including a fresh layer of asphalt and improvements to smooth over some of the more problematic bumps. How smart is it really though to put a sprint event on a track which half of the grid currently haven't even driven on more than once and it'll be very interesting and potentially disastrous to see how the younger drivers manage to set up their car and if they manage to do that properly. The Shanghai circuit is notorious for its complex layout including a prolonged first corner and several high speed sections that extensively stress the left front tyre. This year's event is particularly pivotal as it introduces, like we said, this season's first sprint race, an opportunity for teams to secure additional points early in the championship. Adding his thoughts to the question, Verstappen's teammate Checo said, yeah, I just hope that there are no issues with the track, with any drain holes, any issues like that. That will just put us out of sync. But I think for the show, probably it's good. It's a good thing. But I think from the preparation side, it's going to be definitely one that is going to be really hard because, I mean, I've never raced there, for example, with Red Bull. So it's going to be quite a lot to do in a single practice. Shanghai promises to be an interesting race. This circuit is one of the rarer front limited tracks on the F1 calendar, which could significantly benefit Ferrari rather than Red Bull, because historically Red Bull has struggled with this type of circuit as seen in Melbourne, where front tyre graining was an issue. And while Red Bull's overall car performance is strong, front tyre graining has been a consistent weak point. In contrast, Ferrari's strength lies in preserving rear tyre life, which aligns well with the challenges of this circuit. Additionally, cooler temperatures forecast for the race weekend further favour Ferrari as they tend to perform better in those kinds of conditions. However, the track's long straights and high speed sections could play to Red Bull's strengths in aerodynamic efficiency, adding complexity to the race dynamics. Regarding tyre strategy, Pirelli has chosen the middle range compounds C2, C3, C4 for this race, opting for a safer approach given the energy demands of the circuit. Teams will need to heavily rely on simulations to determine their strategy as they only have one practice session before heading into qualifying due to the sprint format. So navigating three tyre compounds, especially understanding the durability of the soft compound within this range, adds complexity to predicting race strategies. Additionally, the track will start off as green and dirty due to lack of recent racing activity gradually rubbering in throughout the weekend. This, along with the unique sprint format, makes strategy prediction quite challenging. And that's something that we'll be very much looking forward to as we take on Shanghai. As neutral fans, I can see us getting a very interesting race. And why not see only one Red Bull car on the podium? What do you think? Will Red Bull dominate once again? Or will Ferrari stand up to them in a track that favours them slightly more? Is this their chance? Let us know down in the comments and we'll see you soon in the next video.